Hello and welcome. I'm Emily Tellick with Cape Media Conversations. I have with me in the studio today Rosemary Shields, Florence Selden, and Suzanne Brock of the League of Women Voters of the Cape Cod area. Thank you guys so much for being here with us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Glad so, 2020 marks the 100th anniversary of women fighting for the right to vote and it also marks the 100th year of the League of Women Voters. So for our viewers at home who might not be familiar with this organization, can you sort of take us through what your mission is and what services you provide? I would say that the primary mission of the League of Women Voters is to educate people and to advocate for positions that they feel um, are important to them after we've done a lot of study on the issues. It's important that people rep realize that there are two sides to every issue and they need to um, look at all the information. The other thing that's important to recognize is the legal, there's the League of Women in the Cape Cod area, but we are a multi-level organization. Mm -hmm. So there is the League of Women Voters of Massachusetts and there is the League of Women Voters US. You can go on our websites and see all the information. And uh, it's important to recognize that we have strength across the country. There are mm -hmm. 700 plus uh, state and local leagues. We have over mm -hmm. 500,000 members mm -hmm. and uh, do a, a huge amount of work in terms of voter education, but also issues such as voter suppression, gerrymandering. I like that we're the League of Women Voters because we have a historical uh, context there, but we take all members, you mm -hmm. know, males, you know, a anybody, but we're really out there to get people to vote. And of course, March 3rd, mm -hmm. this coming Tuesday is Super Tuesday, and we have to get everyone out that we can to vote. One of your goals is that you want to get people to the polls to vote. Right. So what are some services that you are providing? We're encouraging uh, our members and anybody who will listen, take a friend to the polls. Mm -hmm. If you know neighbors that might have a difficult time to get to the polls, go to your neighbors, mm -hmm. be a good neighbor, be a good citizen. Your vote does count. Mm -hmm. We also, in our last, um, uh, where we got, got together, I got 25 members who have volunteered to take people to the polls in their neighborhood so that if you need to get a ride, you can use DART, you can use the Council on Aging if you're a certain age to help you get to the polls. Mm -hmm. But if you need us, we're there for you. Mm -hmm. And Suzanne mentioned education. Over the years now, the League of Women Voters Cape Cod area has been in existence for 61 years. We celebrated our 60th anniversary last right. year. And over the years, we have um, moderated and sponsored hundreds of debates and forums candidates, right. we've uh, issues. worked yep. issues and yep. issues as well yep. because we never, we're nonpartisan in that mm -hmm. we do not support candidates, but we do support positions. We advocate for positions. Mm -hmm. So what are some issues that women voters are facing? We're still fighting for equal pay. Mm -hmm. We're fighting for um, the right to actually participate uh, on an equal footing with um, men in terms of representation on uh, boards of directors. Um, I don't think that's gonna be, um, I don't think that fight is gonna end anytime soon, but all of the women that are now um, in the working world that have their own businesses, there's a lot of entrepreneurs, and they are actually um, uh, beginning to push for more equal representation at the CEO level. I don't think we have issues of, personally, women as uh, the opportunity to vote. It's a, that's a problem for everybody, mm -hmm. male and female. Voter suppression, uh, closing of polling places. We're opposing a bill in the uh, legislature that calls for voter ID, photo mm -hmm. IDs, because the issue is really all people. And that's our concern, not just for women, but there are too many things going on to suppress votership mm -hmm. instead of expand it. Right, and in particular, people of color. Yes, absolutely. Right, and well, that's right. That's where it's affected right. in the minority community. So women have made a lot of progress over the past 100 years. So what do you think the next 100 years looks like? And do you think we're ever going to get a female president? Yes. We don't know when, but hopefully <laughs> we will. I think that it's really important that women understand that they have as much um, potential and as much right to run for public office. And I think over the next hundred years, I would 
I would certainly hope that the number and the ratio of women to men at all levels um, in terms of holding office and representing the, um, the communities and the nation as a whole would increase. And I, I want to be optimistic and I want to say that we will see a female president. I don't know when it's going to happen. Right. I believe that by the time my uh, granddaughter can vote that it will be time for a female mm -hmm. to run this country. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you. If you would like more information on the League of Women Voters, you can visit lwvcapecod.org. For Cape Media News Conversations, I'm Emily Tellick.